Hey guys, Josh here. Hope you guys have a great day so far. So I'm going to introduce you to the Falinar Gold Farm, as I call it. Well, the things is, if you want to get the Falinar Gold Farm, the first things you need to have is you need to either have skinning, in particular, you can have mining as well, which is not too much, but the main thing is you need to have skinning, because the main um, attribute of this gold farm is basically getting heavy leather and getting medium leather. Now, you may get medium hide and heavy hide during it. If you're a leather worker as well, you can turn these to hides a lot easier. So what I've done here is I bought two stacks of salt from Rannick or any trade supplies do before I go out the farm. Is because you can see here hides stack up to 20 cured hides and uncured hides stack up to 5. Which means you just want to be able to save inventory space because you don't want to be going to and froing from a city. Because it also decreases your average farm on a per hour basis. Now for Fowl and I in particular it's, better, it's really good for skiing and level working which I am. And also you need to make sure you buy all the ammo that you need as well as a hunter or any other um, reagents that you may need as a uh, as your class in particular. So as you can see here that I've brought well, obviously enough arrows to farm myself. Also at the same time you may bring, need to bring some food, some buff food as well. Or some food to feed your pet just in case your pet gets angry at you as well. And that's pretty much it with the pre-farm. Also make sure you clear out all unnecessary items in your bags before going to Falinar to farm in the first place. And we can now fly out to Falana to do our uh, skinning farm. Now this is a part of the overall skinning farm as known as the 1k needle skinning farm which is very very good in season discovery at the moment as it's quite hard to get a farming spot that only drops heavy leather and medium leather given that all the other farming spots drop light and, me and, and, light and medium leather combined and light being super super duper cheap people don't want people rather get the heavy leather rather than the light leather. Anyways guys we'll Tune back in once we get to the spot, and we'll discuss the spot further with its advantages and also its disadvantages. Now just a forward as well, this has been really hyped up as an extremely good farming spot according to my server on Shadow Strike, where a lot of people were hyping the spot up to generate about uh, 10 to 20 silver per minute. We're going to go through this bit by bit to see if it actually lives up to its height. So here we're at Falinar, so we're going to go through the basics of what that Falinar farm. So for Alliance in particular, you fly to Falinar. And you've got a vendor here, just in case you need a vendor your greys. And pretty much you're farming all everything in this area. Whether it's Boulderkin, whether it's the Cobalts, and whether it's the Hyenas or Jaguars. Now the reason why this is so good for, obviously, uh, skinners and level workers is that you can skin these and they have a chance of dropping medium level or heavy level. Now the humanoids around here as well, including the Boulderkin, have a chance to drop heavy stone, which is good for heavy dynamite, which is used by some classes, in particular Metal Warlocks for tanking. So you can also give that around as well, as in these two heavy stone to create a dynamite. Now overall, uh, medium leather is worth about two silver on my server, and about eleven and heavy leather is worth about eleven silver. It generally floats between this area because you need medium leather to make tough and leather gloves, which is a part of this farm as well. There are also some mining nodes here as well, but we really don't pay attention that, to it because there's only one iron node and a few copper and tin nodes around this area. There, there isn't too much to really pay attention to. Now, also as well, from the humanoids and the elementals, and also the beasts as well, you can get recipes of 150, whether it's 150 blacksmithing, engineering, enchanting, or whatnot, which is an important part of this grind in particular, that you can get any of these. So that's very, very important to highlight. Um, overall, from what I've been doing with this farm, this farm is between 2 and 11 silver, and that's pretty much it. It's not anything too special, and you just farm these over and over again. Now, if you are Horde, you'd be wondering, oh, can I do a variation of this sort of farm? And I'm going to tell you straight up, yes, you can. You can do a, a variation of this farm. So what you need to do is, obviously, as you can see here on my map, you can go to Freewind Post, and you can basically farm the south area of Freewind Post. You can farm the north area of it, but remember, you're between two centaur camps, which you don't want to really farm at this point, especially if you're just doing the leather farm. The centaur camps you don't really want to go to unless you're farming tailoring or anything like that. Another farm has been going to High Perch. High Perch is not really that great, given the fact that some of the mobs are over level 30, which means you can't skin them, which is pretty much a, 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 well, a party pooper. Now, Horde in particular, like, you can farm down this area, this is your farming spot, and you go out back to the elevator, or whatever it is, to send your greens and vend your trash here. That's pretty much it for the Horde side. Um, for the Alliance side, if you want to bank anything or send anything, you're going to have to go to Feather Moon Stronghold or Ratchet. If you do need to restock on anything in particular, you do need to go to Feather Moon or Ratchet. That's that's unfortunately, you, you know, the path of, 
Well, unfortunately, that's what you got to do, as there's no supplies in Falinar. However, for Horde, you can always just go to Free and Post, and if you need any extra special, you can go back to the Barons. Now, overall, the to um, get to the meat and potatoes of it, um, is this farm great? Is this farm well beating? Well, not really. As well as you have a few cautionary tales as well. Um, if you guys do not know that Rockland the Pounder and also Steel Snap pat along this area as well for Falinar. In the other areas, they do not pat at all, so it's pretty easier for the Horde to farm this location. But you've got to be very, very careful in this area to make sure you don't get eaten by, obviously, you don't get eaten by Rockland the Pounder or Steel Snap and his hyenas. Now, also, they did say they generated like 10 to 20 silver per minute. I do not see that at all. I see a lot less, to be frank. Um, I'd say between 2 silver and 10 silver. Now, a lot of you guys in particular, I just want the, uh, the cliff notes of it. The cliff notes, what you can farm here is heavy leather, medium leather, heavy stone, iron ore, 150, 150 uh, recipes, and you also can farm some well blues that are wearable in this phase, which is, which can be quite important, especially if you're selling your best in slot, is a random blue well drop. Um, otherwise, the best gold farm is still questing by far, but once you're out of questing, you can just basically come here and farm it. I'll basically post in the comments of the cords that in particular that I farm for Alliance and that I farm for Horde. Anyways guys, hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys later.